Hello everybody, today we'll look at mode shapes of a square plate in constrained condition. So in the previous video in the series, we talked about what are mode shapes, derived the eigenvalue and eigenvector for a single degree of freedom system analytically, and finally performed a numerical simulation on a simple square plate and determined the natural frequencies and mode shapes of that plate. So in, in that video, what we did was we performed a free eigenvalue analysis because the plate was not constrained. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take the same plate with the same material, but the only difference is we're going to constrain the plate. So the goal of this video is to study what is the effect of the boundary condition. Okay, so since we're constraining the plate, we're adding a boundary condition. The theory states that you know, if, if there's a change in the boundary condition, it should change the natural frequencies and mode shapes. So let's verify that using numerical simulation. Now let's talk about constraints. What is a constraint? So a boundary condition is the application of force or a constraint. A constraint can be thought of as something that limits motion. If you take an adhesive and stick one object to the other, the adhesive acts as a constraint. It prevents, you know, any motion. So constraints limit the degrees of freedom of a system and constraint can be applied along one degree of freedom or for all six degrees of freedom. Here's an image of a plate that we used in the previous video. So the dimensions are same, 100 by 100 by 2. The materials are also same, steel with all the material properties, Young's modulus, density, Poisson's ratio. The only difference is it's constrained along the perimeter in all six degrees of freedom, three translational and three rotational. So it'll look like this, so all the edges are constrained. So now we're going to perform the numerical simulations. So the plate has total 121 nodes and 100 elements, but there are certain nodes that are constrained and certain nodes are unconstrained. So we can find the unconstrained nodes by subtracting the constrained nodes. So 121 is the total number of nodes, 40 are the constrained nodes, so the total number of unconstrained nodes are 86, and the total number of degrees of freedom per node is 6. So the total degrees of freedom of the plate is 6 times 86, which is 486, and this leads to a 486 by 486 matrix, which has to be solved, which is accomplished using the block lenzos eigenvalue extraction method. So once the analysis is performed, we get the results. So I've chosen first eight modes, and these are not rigid body modes because we're using a boundary condition we're fixing along the edges. So these are the natural frequencies, and now we'll go through the mode shapes. So this is the first mode, uh, 1770 hertz. So what one thing that we can observe in all the mode shapes is that the edges or the corners are, you know, have no motion at all or just static. That is because we apply the constraint. We have constrained those nodes, you know, we're, we're restricting their motions in all six degrees of freedom. So that's going to be one common thing in all the eight mode shapes that you'll observe. So in this, this is the first mode shape, you know, it's acting like this. This is the second mode shape. As you can observe, the edges have no motion at all. This is the third mode shape. The fourth mode shape. Fifth mode. Sixth mode. Seventh mode. And eighth mode. Okay, now let's compare the mode shapes of the unconstrained plate and the constrained plate. So in this video, we have performed the analysis of the constrained plate, and I took the results from the previous video for unconstrained plate. And you can clearly observe that you know the frequencies are not the same; they're different. So it does verify the theory that natural frequency does change if we add a boundary condition. Now let's verify if the same is true for mode shapes. Yeah, it is true. So the first mode in unconstrained, you know, a case looks like that on the left, and on the right we have the constrained mode shape. So clearly, uh, you know, the edges are constrained, that itself results in a change in the mode shape. So this is also true for the second mode shape and every single mode shape here and after.
All right, to conclude, you know, we added a boundary condition wherein we fixed all the edges of the square plate, but we didn't change anything else. So we only added that one constraint, and this resulted in a change in the natural frequencies of the plate and also changes in the mode shapes of the plate. So this does verify that if you alter a boundary condition or put a new boundary condition, it's going to result in a change in natural frequencies and mode shapes. All right, thank you for watching this video. In the next video in the series, we'll talk about altering the structural properties of the plate and then, you know, look at the results, what's going to happen. Will the natural frequencies and mode shapes change or remain the same? Thank you for watching. Have a great day.